Man, but even when, okay, so even during the sucker free era, though, man, talk about when y'all did the H Time Mob movie, man. Man, that was crazy, man. Oh um, man, they they hit Cause me. You had a role in, like you had like a major role in that shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I, Early I, in your career. I ain't gonna lie, I felt like I was, <laughs> I had the best character on that bitch. <laughs> like like in real life, because it was other people in the movie that they were like, Yeah, this person is, you know, a big actor and they were in this movie and they did this and man, when I watched the final edit of it, I'm like I ain't gonna lie, I came through and stole the show because it's a lot of <laughs> lines that they wrote. I would be like, this ain't how I would say it. Like, I actually changed a lot of the lines so it made sense and it felt legit. Like, you know what I'm saying? And um, I had fun doing that though, man. That was cool. I got to be on the movie soundtrack. Yeah. And, you remember um, anything about when y'all was like shooting it all there? Like, anything hell yeah. Just that? Hell yeah, I remember. Like, everything about it, bro. Like, even the beginning of the movie. I didn't have tattoos right here. And then, like, toward the end, I did. So it's like one part where I'm sitting, like, at the studio or whatever, and I ain't had the tats. But, um, man, there's so many dope move, movie scenes of that. Um, like, man, even toward the end, like, some way, like, some of the footage or the audio had got messed up or whatever. And we had to go in the studio and like re say some of the lines. Like it's this one part we riding in the truck, and I'm, I'm telling my partner to get out his deal or whatever. And you can just tell, like the I can tell, because I know that the audio it sounds different from the rest of the movie because we had to go back and redo it. But yeah, that that was cool, bro. Um, being on another movie set, you know, I've been on movie sets before, like like. I went to River Oaks Elementary, so I went to school with white people, you know what I'm saying, predominantly. And because when I went to River Oaks, I mean, when I went to J.J. Rose in my neighborhood, like, they was like, I'm too smart. So after that, I went to River Oaks, a Vanguard program. So I was already learning how to speak Spanish, French, direct, build, acting sets, props, you know what I mean, edit, computers. Like, I was already on it, you know what I mean? So to be in the movie and actually playing it and knowing it is going to come out, something's going to come out. It was phenomenal, man. Like, a great experience, man. I, I'll never forget it. And that's why I don't let directors or cameramen play with me, especially when it comes to the editing and running up my budget and all that type of shit because I know how to edit too. So I know the star game, you know what I mean? And I know how to maximize my time, you know what I mean? That was a fun-ass time, though. Yeah, yeah. Who was... Um Who's behind that movie? Man, I was told, I don't know for sure. I was told back then it was uh it was Lil Troy, I think a guy f that used to work at 97.9 named Eddie, something like that, Eddie Corrales or something like that. Uh, yeah, I, th I think they were like behind putting it out, something like that, you know. Um, and SPM, he may have had something to do with it, too. He was in it as well. So, you know what I'm saying? So, that's what I was told. Yeah. Even with that storyline, man, how many times have you seen, like, that shit just go down, like, niggas just get lost in the game like that? Like, who? Like, uh, like in the movie, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, boy, like, how you, you just really got caught up and just got lost in the game, you know what I'm saying? Nah, it, it happens a lot. It happens often. And and a lot of times, like, like with this... Um, even with life, though, man, a lot of people, they don't realize that you're not where you at because you in your own way. A lot of people, they, they quick to point fingers at this person, that person, this person. I'm not here because it's your fault. You didn't do this. If you would have put me on this song, I would have blew up. Like, bro, at the end of the day, bro, it's your fault on what you allow somebody to do to you, on what you allow yourself to do to not get to where you need to be. But yeah, I see that shit all the time because this the thing, man. A lot of artists, they get so caught up in being the artist and, and, and the image and the, t the talent part of it. They don't give a fuck about the, the PR, the being in good graces with DJs, the you know, showing love, taking that extra picture, you know what I'm saying? Giving that DJ that drop when that DJ asks for the drop, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers rather be in VIP, just cool, anti-social. Like me, man, fuck that. When I go to the club, 
I just I just literally did an interview with the nerd DJs, Big Hef and them, all of them, you know what I'm saying, like 1,500 DJs. And I told them, when I go to the club and I walk in and they try to walk me to the green room or the VIP, the first place I go is to the DJ. I say, nope, take me to the DJ first. I go to the DJ booth. I don't care if it's way on the other, uh, other side of the club, you know what I mean? I'm going. I don't care if we got to walk through the whole crowd. I'm going to go say what's up to the DJ, look him in his eyes, you know, intro myself. If I don't have his info, swap numbers, emails, boom, boom, boom. But now, you know, with the COVID, you know, I did a deal with this company called ClearCard. You know, make sure y'all support it, man. Like, you meet somebody, they want your info, you just tap the card on their phone and all your information go. Mm -hmm. Phone number, email, album, mixtape, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to show it to you. I got one in my bag. Get, get it out of my wallet. So, you know. Yeah. Man. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston. Donnie Houston.